Um, thanks, Adele. Um, yeah, if you want to um, share who you are and where you're coming from in the chat, that'd be fantastic. And throughout the evening, if you have any questions, um, it would be great to pop that in the chat box as well. We do have a, a Q&A session towards the end of the webinar um, and Adele will be um, sharing those questions. So I'm Renata, I work at the Open Food Network and have been running these webinars um, this year. Um, and Adele, my colleague, is helping to run this session with me this evening, which is great. Thank you, Adele. We have two wonderful guests tonight. I'm really excited to introduce um, Rob and Jesse, who will be speaking. Um, and yeah, so firstly, I'm going to introduce Rob from Food Connect in Brisbane. Thank you so much for joining us, Rob. Oh, great to be on here, Renata. Yeah, fantastic. I think there's um, a lot of people very excited to ask you some questions this evening. <laughs> um, so thank you for, you know, coming on and sharing your knowledge. Um, if you want to kick us off, obviously, we're here tonight to have a conversation about um, re, uh, engaging um, customers in a post-COVID world and for some mm. people who are listening tonight they may have started their online presence during the COVID period um, and they may have seen some you know some customers come on board that um, that maybe haven't stayed with them and we're really keen to hear from your perspective um, from Food Connect, given that you started, what was it, all the way back in 2005? 2004, yeah. Four. No, wow. 2004, so um, yeah, that's right. And, and it's a great topic because it's certainly a challenging topic, um, you, you know, given the all, all the exhilaration of, uh, of um, you know, last year, everyone jumping on board. So, um, and I know, um, uh, I know Jesse will give you a lot of information on what we tried to do. we certainly, and hopefully that'll help out through the evening. But um, yes, the in the early in two thousand and four, my single goal um, back then was to, uh, and I was it was I did a lot of thinking in the time be, between losing the dairy farm and then having that little CSA in Tasmania, around um, uh, finding the core believers, um, and how was I going to do that, and my um, my original sort of thinking, not it wasn't all that sophisticated, was to turn people from passive consumers to active consumers, which is the, one of the sort of core principles of CSAs. But when I started Food Connect, which was a multi-farmer CSA idea, um, I most of my time was spent giving all the eaters, because uh, bearing in mind those early days, I was surrounded by a bunch of mums who were really keen to see this thing happen. And, um, and they basically said, well, okay, let's meet with some farmers and design the box. And, you know, they did a lot of thinking about how many carrots a week could they eat and how many potatoes. And, you know, they're measuring that up in, in kilos. And, and um, so that, and, you know, even to the point when maybe in 2007, when we we're actually here on the other side of the shed, we uh, went into meat and we thought, oh, well, let's, how, how do we figure out you know, how do, how do we divide a whole animal um, equally so all the customers get to eat the whole cow and the whole pig and the whole sheep? And we brought in a couple of animals and we had a butcher and all the city people come in and we basically, you know, on these big stainless steel benches, cut up whole cows um, into all its various cuts. And then they thought through, well, this is how much is going to fit in a chest freezer and this is how much is going to fit in the freezer on the top of my fridge. And so, you know, there was, uh, I, you know, being an ex-farmer, I didn't want to really be the one who decided what they ate. I really wanted the city people to have, to be informed as much as possible, but for them to make the final decision. Um, and uh, as Jesse will, you know, go through a bit later on, that's still pretty core to how Food Connect does things. Um, and then over the, the years from 2004, five, six, seven, you know, uh, to the GFC, where we saw a big, that was the big sort of first drop off in, you know, we were mm -hmm. doing a thousand boxes and we had a couple of things that we, that we had to grapple with. Um, uh, and then, and then into the years where we, 
where we rebranded and, um, you know, you sort of, uh, you were struggling for financial viability as a business and um, we were probably paying the farmers way too much. We were sort of being an ex-farmer, I was, I was overemphasizing the amount of money that should go towards the farmer and I was cannibalizing internally. And then there was a, the whole system approach that as a system social enterprise, I was looking at from a business point of view, well, how do we build not only, you know, the Food Connect business, but how do we build the whole Brisbane and Southeast Queensland region to become more resilient and to have more people who are doing this stuff, you know, because together we could, we could grow the size of the cake. Um, so there was, there was a real focus on building community. And obviously that was, you know, going back to 2004, one of the mums invented this city cousin idea. She said, um, she'd come to the farm a couple of times where we picked up all the boxes. Well, there was two, two mums and they said, this is really hard work. Um, if you get it to our place, we'll use our place as a drop-off spot. And so that night we named them city cousins and that's become really core. Um, and then maybe 2000 and, uh, 2008, eight nine, when we had a bunch of university students who were graduating, who'd been working for Food Connect as packers and they decided um, to go and get real jobs. You know, they graduated and, um, but they missed the 30% discount that they were getting from Food Connect. And so buyers clubs were designed with this 30% discount. So if you buy in bulk off Food Connect, we'll deliver it, you know, a box of lettuces, a box of tomatoes and all that bag of, bag of spuds. Um, and so buyers clubs become this, you know, this uh, a, a, a deepening way of aligning customers with Food Connect. Um, uh, so none of it's been designed by me, Renato. I'm, I'm really much, <laughs> I've really, <laughs> really let the eaters, you know, uh, uh, design ideas that then I've said, wow, that really aligns. You know, what can we do to support that? Um, and uh, that's fantastic. That's and fantastic. if they're engaged and it's meeting their needs, then they're more likely to continue to purchase. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And just to finish off, so that um, you know, um, the real expert uh, Jesse can sort of get in. You know, get uh, get really sort of more um, into the detail of this. Is that um, uh, all I did from those early days was I'd always look at the email, this is back before Facebook, and look at the bottom of the email and go, oh, this person is a such and such. Oh, they'd be really good at, you know, writing the farm letter. So I'd ring them up and they'd say, I've never spoken to a farm, farmer before in my life. And I'd, you know, send them a bit of a, you know, dot point of what to ask a farmer and they would write the farm letter. And, and that was there. That was, so every time I was looking for ways, how can I get someone from being a, a purchaser, you know, and maybe they're picking up from a city cousin to a participant. Um, and that's remained pretty key um, uh, throughout that time. Oh, that's fantastic. Thanks for sharing, Rob. It sounds like a really interesting kind of, yeah, beginning and, and how that's driven um, how you connect with, with your customers. So thank yeah. you. And I'm sure there'll be a whole lot of questions for you um, later in the evening. Um, so now we'll have a chat to Jesse, um, and I um, was fortunate enough to have a conversation with Jesse earlier in the week, and I'm super excited to hear some of the things she's going to share this evening. So Jesse, tell tell us a little bit, because um, I know you do work with Food Connect, but also with with other producers. So you want to just tell us a little bit about what you do? Yeah, sure. So, um, and thank you for having me. Hi everyone, I'm Jesse. Um, I am a marketing and PR consultant for farm to table businesses. So that can be anything from small scale producers to bigger organizations and social enterprises like Food Connect um, or other just for small food businesses who um, use and focus on local produce, kind of anyone who's working to get people more connected to where their food com comes from and shortening that chain. Um, I fell into doing that. I grew up in northern New South Wales um, on a hobby farm, always eating our own veggies, meat, all of that, um, and then moved to Brisbane for uni. Um, my first marketing job was in hospitality. So love food. Um, was working for a lot of restaurants, cafes, pubs, bars, the whole shebang. Um, that's actually where I met Food Connect for the first time when I did the PR for their 10th anniversary um, birthday party. But um, I started to get a little bit disillusioned working in hospitality because I was dealing with so many um, chefs and restaurant owners who were saying things were local when they weren't or like some of them 
their best efforts, they honestly thought the food was local, but they couldn't exactly tell me where it was coming from and all of that sort of thing. Um, one thing that everyone laughed at me about was this particular restaurant who was doing these burgers made from a particular breed of cattle and then putting a completely different one on the packaging because they had not, they were super proud of this cow, but they didn't know what it looked like. Um, so I left that, um, went and worked for Queensland government for a while in agriculture related um, departments. Um, and then I was seeing it from the other side. I was traveling out to all of these farms, um, working with a lot of farmers who were convinced that city people didn't understand them, hated them, or just didn't get it, thought they were doing the wrong, you know, that environmental vandal thing, right? And there's so many different elements to it and angles. So I was seeing that disconnect that everyone knows is there. I was talking about it, but I was seeing so much more potential and how much both sides really wanted to know, um, but just wasn't there. So I went a bit nuts and went out on my own. <laughs> Um, luckily I reconnected with Food Connect pretty quickly um, just after their big COVID spike last year um, and I've been working with them ever since as long as as well as a lot of other people along the way. Yeah fantastic so can you tell us talking about Food Connect um, you know are there some factors that you think have really helped um, to Food Connect to be successful in engaging and retaining customers? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Rob's covered a lot of it, but that focus on community is key. Um, he didn't mention it, and I think it might drive some people in the office nuts sometimes, but they are such a community that Rob will get out there and tell people to just swing by the shed for a cuppa sometimes. Um, they'll be knee-deep in orders and someone will knock at the door saying, hi, we just wanted to check the joint out. Um, but that just sense of connection and community is key. Um, the fact that they nurture that through things like farm tours, having people just kind of come through the shed, um, how often we ask them for feedback. Um, so we do quite a lot of surveys and constant, whether that's the annual survey where we get quite a lot of information all at once, ask them for feedback on value, um, what else they want to see both in, in their um, boxes, but also what do they want to see from us on social media? Like what do they want to know more about? Um, but also just interim stuff. Once you've been around for a couple of weeks or months, sending that message, how are you going? Like it's personalized from the sales girls. It's not like a bulk automated one. Um, we noticed you ordered this particular product. It's kind of new to us. How are you feeling about it? Um, but one thing Food Connect's done really well that Rob is just a champion of is creating that community, not just based around Food Connect as the organization, but um, well, I guess it's like the thing that is in common, but it's not reliant on Food Connect. So many of these people have created their own community and friendship groups around it, whether that is the bias groups um, through meeting and just sharing and swapping recipes on the Facebook group, um, meeting at tours. When I first started working with them again early last year, um, I was giving a call to some of those city cousins, the people who act as drop-off points for everyone to kind of come around. And it's really nice touch. Like people don't necessarily know their neighbours anymore and the city cousins go a long way for doing that. But one of the girls um, said that Food Connect is responsible for her entire network in Brisbane because when she first moved here from Canada, she was a young, well, she wasn't even a young mum yet. She was pregnant and she got invited around to her local city cousin who just said, come around and try some of this fruit that I'm helping people sell. And it all kind of just went from there. But I think another thing that's been really successful for them is even though Food Connect has grown to be, a, you know, a bigger organisation than I think a lot of other social enterprises or hubs might be, um, they still have that, not just that personal touch of reaching out, but so many of the tools that they use, those systems um, are quite just simple and straightforward and easy for people to use. And that's just like things like the reminder emails and reminder texts and kind of checking in with people after a couple, every couple of months. And that's the sort of tool that anyone can use. You don't have to have a big budget for. Yeah, that's great. So, um, Obviously, given that you work with both big and small groups, I'm really curious to hear more about um, some important things to consider for your new and existing customers supporting those relationships. Yeah, sure. Um, something that I always say, um, which isn't the most exciting thing when you're kind of looking at new customers and shiny and exciting, is um, always focus on the existing ones first. Look after the people you've got. Um, not just because, you know, bird in the hand and all of that, they're there, but they help you bring in more people like them through their friends and family. Um, 
And new customers kind of coming on board will see how you're treating their existing customers and what it's like to be part of your community. And that speaks volumes. Um, with any customer though, new or existing, kind of focusing on how you are helping them be part of that community. Like I, I'm, and settling them in and onboarding, not everyone's gonna have as many moving parts and like elements to their like community as Food Connect does. And that's absolutely fine. Um, so say you're just a, you know, you're a single producer who just sells your own product. You don't have all of the bells and whistles, but still looking at how you're onboarding someone as a customer. So when they first start ordering, have you got like a fact sheet or just a simple email explaining how it all works, what the ordering cycle is, um, how to get the most out of it, any common pitfalls they might come up across. Um, again, checking in a couple of weeks later or months or anything like that. Um, if you are a little bit bigger, trying to do something like setting up a Facebook group where you can introduce them to more people like them and creating that community, that takes some of the work off you as well because then they can swap recipes and tips and kind of just build the community without you having to do much. Um, where was I going with that? Also, yeah, if you can, doing things like events and tours, that also helps build it all up as well. Um, but the most important thing, like community building or otherwise, is really making sure, like Rob said, you're kind of, you're keeping them front of mind. Um, it's not always what's convenient for you. It's like, if they can't make it and they can't buy from you, it's not going to be much help to anybody. So do your best to really understand your customers, who they are, what would make their life easier, and make sure you're putting that out there, um, not just easier, but more fun as well. Like, what can you tell them and really spell it out? Like humans, we're, we've got so much going on in our brains right now. So make sure you're spelling it out so that it's not just passing them by when they're scrolling through Facebook. So that's things like, um, what have we got? So would it be easier if you can time things around school pickup for them? Or if you know that they've got kids and school holidays is coming up, remind them, hey, why don't you stock up on fruit before it comes in? Or if you are really values driven and that's the sort of thing, make sure you're putting that out there and kind of spelling it out and telling them, you know, you could soup shop at the supermarket or you could shop with us and kind of vote with your fork and live your values that way. But yeah, really understand them, what makes them tick and spell it out. <laughs> <laughs> so on that, um, like understanding your ideal customer, um, like how important is that and how can, how can, these guys figure that out for themselves. I might rope you back in here in a second, Rob, but um, uh, understanding your target customer is something that gets me super excited. Um, it is really, really important. I think it's one of those things that so many of us have in our heads. We've got a rough idea, like we like that sort of person and we want them to believe in it and come along and support us. But until you take the time to really write it out, it can be either this it can be too vague and you're trying to talk to everybody at the same time, or you can fall into the pitfall um, that quite a lot of people will come across. So if you'll do some marketing 101 course online and it'll say, write out this avatar of your ideal customer. And you're kind of writing up this absolutely perfect person who doesn't exist. So my favorite person, my favorite way to do it is look at the customers you've got. Who do you absolutely love? Who is spending a lot of money with you? Or on the flip side, they might not be spending that much, but every time they walk in the door, they're an absolute delight and you love them and they tell their friends about you, all of that sort of thing. And really look at them, look at what it is about them, how they found you, what they love about you. Um, take the time to survey them if you need to, like if you've got that, or even just a casual conversation, just what do you love about us? Have you told your friends? How do you find us? All of that sort of thing. And really get to know them, um, have they got kids, what all the stuff I was talking about before about how can you fit into their life or make their life more fun or exciting. Um, so with Food Connect, we've got kind of two key audience groups at the moment. Um, one of them is pretty much based on the core customers that have been there from day one for Rob. Um, their mother's kind of in the age like late 30s to, you can unmute yourself if you want to disagree or agree, Rob, but late 30s up to like, mid 50s maybe they got kids primary school early high school what was that face <laughs> that's spot on no no okay thinking, yeah that's probably right yeah yeah so they've got kids a lot of most of them they're from um double income families so they're working they're very busy um they're looking for a way to make sure they're feeding the family healthily most of them are very community focused so they want to be, feel part of something 
and they want to be supporting their values, but they don't necessarily have the time. So Food mm. Connect is a really good way for them to do that and kind of come along to the occasional event, stay in the loop through things like the Facebook group and newsletters and just kind of seeing, if, even if it's just seeing their delivery driver, people love their drivers. Mm. Um, and then the other one is kind of more, the mums are eco-focused, but the younger ones even more so. So we're kind of focusing on millennials with eco-anxiety and again, on that topic of being based on real people, um, this one is kind of based on myself and a couple of the other people in the office. Like, <laughs> what do we buy? Where else are we shopping as well? Where can it fit in with our lives? Um, yeah, kind of more young professional, little like willing to spend on food as well. <laughs> Does that make sense? Have I, zoned, have I muted? <laughs> Oh, Renata's. I can't muted. hear you, Renata. You're muted, Renata. <laughs> She's still going. Um, Do you want to add anything there, Rob? Yeah, I, yeah just until. Oh, a mouse. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Pressing mouse space bar. Oh, well, space bar. Oh, no. No. Oh. oh, goodness me. <laughs> um, gee whiz. Well, this, you know, the only thing I could add there is, um, yeah, the. Um, uh, I suppose there's two two things two things I would add there is that um, the intent on uh, values alignment or finding that sort of customer group that's values alignment um, and not uh, in the early days was very much I was looking for the hardcore customer because it was a project and I wanted to see whether this was going to you know um, you know fail fast or or or, or uh, what's the other saying so I really focused on on just the core, like it was very, very specific, the customer group I was looking for, and that was really successful. I think as the years went on and we broadened, we wanted to broaden our customer base, I had to take the, the foot off the pedal in terms of looking for that customer who felt, um, you know, I didn't want to ear bash customers anymore. It was all more about giving eaters uh, agency over where they bought their food and to give them lots of, um, lots of room to find their niche. So uh, when you did the 10 year um, anniversary, Emma and I sat down and we said, well, okay, you know, we've had this hard and fast, you know, three hour radius around Food Connect. And it's probably not nuanced in terms of the conversation that people are having because there's so much more awareness around um, all the impacts that food is having on the environment and the economy, um, their, their health. So we designed the Brisbane Food Plan to give our eaters um, you know, uh, a spectrum, I suppose, where they could sit and appreciate Food Connect from. So it wasn't so much targeted. It was like, okay, we know a lot of people are really concerned about a whole bunch of things. How can we design the Brisbane food plan around, or how could we, how could we build into Food Connect strategy something that touched on all those bases without, you know, as you said earlier, Jesse, around, um, we were trying to be too, all thing, you know, without being all things to all people. We really sort of wanted to just find that, that group of customers who were either interested in their own health, interested in the environment. Um, they had, and this is where the buyers groups come in, they had an economic, um, uh, you know, they had a budget that they had to work with or people who were concerned around social justice. So they were the four sort of groupings that we um, looked at in 2015, 2014, 15. You're off mute, Renata, I can see. I am. I'm, oh. You go, Jesse. <laughs> I was just going to add something there. I think Free Connect's gotten quite lucky now, Rob, in the terms of like the four groups you were looking at have merged quite well over the mm. last five years. We've, we've come a long way from 2015. This is um throwing yes. back throwing back a long way now. But um that PR campaign I for that 10th birthday, it, that street party was amazing, by the way. Like yeah. <laughs> incredible it was i think they were sold out of food by like 6 p.m or something mm. so it ended up going really well but um what rob was talking about a lot of the people i guess this is why you came to the agency that i was working with at the time right that you knew you couldn't just keep talking to the same people you wanted to branch out and where i was at the time was quite commercial and a lot of mainstream pubs and that sort of thing but at the same time i was working with like say a lot of the health conscious people which might only have been like one part of food connects puzzle at the time but because they already had that one thing in common, they're more likely to want to know about the other ones as well. Um, so we had the health. We um, we reached out to a lot of gyms. Um, we also got 
unfort well, lucky for us, unfortunate for other, other people. Um, it came at the same time as there was that outbreak in um, hepatitis from frozen berries from China. Mm. So that was really good for demonstrating the importance of local food as well. Mm. But um, yeah, I, that's another reason I like to not focus on really, really precise um, customer, ideal customers as well, because then you're missing like their friend who might not know, who might agree with you if they knew about it. But if they have like these three things in common, you're more likely to find them and kind of make that Venn diagram and reach out into new groups. Yeah, it's fantastic. Um, thank you for your patience with my mouse. It seems to have just disconnected, which is very annoying. Um, just finally, before we open up to the Q&A session, I'd like to ask about um, whether we should be worried um, about customers that purchased during COVID um, but then didn't return in that kind of post-COVID um, world. <laughs> <laughs> that we're sometimes in and sometimes not at the moment. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I feel for all of you in New South Wales and Victoria. Um, it's a big question. I mean, Rob might disagree with me here. I don't think you necessarily need to be worried about the people who have come and never come back because there's, um, there's all sorts of reasons that that could have happened and almost none of them are your fault or have anything to do with what you've done. Um, I actually think... Those people, it, you can be disappointed, but not worried. Like there's so much that you can learn from them and there's still a lot of opportunity to get them back as well. Um, it's important to remember that when COVID started, we were fresh off the back of drought and bushfires, um, the buy from the bush campaign that performed phenomenally. So over the last, you know, since I've been working in food marketing for the last seven years, I've been seeing a lot of this gradual change towards people being more and more interested in where their foods come from. And the bushfires, COVID, supporting small, all of that has just amplified it really quickly. And I think a lot of people were really excited about it, which is an awesome sign, but they're not, it kind of went too fast. They weren't quite ready <laughs> for like what that meant of like changing their habits and buying locally. Um, so Rob, what were the figures for Food Connect? You almost quadrupled during COVID. Yes, and yeah, no, we did. Yeah. yeah. And now it's back to still about, double what you were before COVID, but that's still, yeah. you know, big yeah. drop. I think there was, you know, definitely when they first started dropping away, it was sad to see them go. Yeah. But um, there's all sorts of reasons that they could have been there. Some of them, it was just that they were terrified to go to the supermarket and they just wanted anyone who could deliver because Coles and Woolworths were having like five day, um, five day waiting times and you still had no idea of what you were ordering was going to get there. Whereas Food Connect essentially harvests to order so that they knew that was going to be reliable. Some people were kind of just swept up in the COVID lockdown mania. I was like, yes, I'm going to support small and I'm going to do this novelty thing. And then that was gone. But um, some of them wanted to support small and were more aware of environmental and food system um, issues after all this happened. And some of those have stuck around. Um, I think those people who, whether they left months ago or it's been more recent, um, don't completely discount them because some of those people they might come back on special occasions or they might come back should there be another lockdown or if a particular fruit or something is back in season. So it's not that they're gone forever, but kind of keep them in the loop if you do have their email. Um, Fruit Connect, every, after every lockdown when there's been that spike and it kind of goes away again, about a month later, we send an email saying, you know, we've have noticed we haven't seen you in a while. Um, would love to be back. Here are some kind of tips for engaging or a little bit more about what, we, what it is we do. And that generally kind of brings a couple back here and there. Um, but yeah, absolutely. Don't be afraid to ask them why they were there in the first place and why they left either. Whether that is just in person or if you do have email addresses, send out a quick survey monkey or Google form. Um, it might not be what you want to hear, but um, getting things back saying that, um, yeah, I was only there because I couldn't get to Coles or um, I really liked you in the meantime, but you're probably a little bit too expensive for me week to week or anything like that is really good to know. And there might be those ones who said, um, oh, no, I absolutely loved you, but then life went back to normal and I fell back into my own habits. And having that information, those are the people that you can kind of look at, okay, how do I get them back? How do I make myself part of their routine instead of just, you know, being part of the COVID blur that went away? Yeah, yeah. And yeah, yeah, just quickly, just quickly, I just add, no, I completely agree with you, um, Jesse. The... Um, uh, yeah, don't see it as disappointing. See it as a as a, as a learning um, for yourself, and and how you know see it as a challenge basically. But also um, keep your focus on who's who 
who has stayed with you. Um, you know, the famous Bradbury sisters, the famous uh, ecologists have, um, who've completely reinvented bush regeneration said to just focus on what is thriving, you know, when they start to rehabilitate something or don't worry about something you put a lot of effort into and it's dying, just leave that alone, just focus on what is, you know, wanting to. So that's where we, I, I double down efforts on city cousins, buyers, clubs, all of those things. Um, there's, cause they were, you know, because um, the world that we see in the future is one where it's gonna have much more importance placed on community and small groups and people collaborating and the shed, obviously the shed, shed helps us a lot with that, that, that side of things as well. But, um, uh, one of the key things, um, and someone needs to mute themselves, but one of the key things in, um, in, uh, in this whole Adele. movement, yep. yeah, it, one of the key things in this whole movement is um, it, it, it is challenging. And, you know, Food Connect has been on a knife edge, you know, financially viable for many, many, many years. And the one thing I've learned is, um, is to um, put the good intent out there. You know, this is a long-term plan. You know, the supermarkets took over, it took them about 40 years to eventually take mm -hmm. over. We're gonna, you know, COVID has helped us a long, long way. Um, and it is going to be a challenge, but your intent has to be on the positive side of things. On you're looking for well, who can I work with here? Who is who is you know who's, who is aligned? Um, you know, I'm going through a big process of the farmers. See your farmers as a part of that sales team. Um, you know, we've we've got so many great farmers, but not all of them are aligned. And so you're finding, and I'm finding new farmers through deep conversations are wanting to realign themselves with us because the world has moved and they want to be on the right side of history, not on the industrial side of history, whether they're organic or not. So it's quite a, it's a, it's a little fascinating time at the moment and see, see it as a, as a place to become really curious. I like that. I like the idea of being more curious. <laughs> I'm going to hand over to Adele now, who's um, going to um, ask some of the questions that have been popped in the chat. If you've got a question that you'd like to ask Jesse or Rob or both of them, please pop that in the chat um, and yeah, Adele will ask them. Cool. Um, so we've got a question from Prue um, who's asking how Food Connect manages the increased competition in the market. Um, I mean, either can <laughs> answer that. <laughs> Rob, you first. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, yeah, I've never, I mean, the root, the root meaning of the word competition means to strive to help everyone get better. So uh, if that's going right back to the, the Latin, it's a, a combination of Latin and French. So that's why I love the question, Prue. It, um, and for me, um, when I started Food Connect, I, was, oh, I wanted to build the whole food system so Coles and Woolies have no space to exist. Actually, we've, we've starved them of farmers, basically, and they just don't exist anymore. So, um, and that can't be done by me alone or Food Connect alone or, or Food Connect farmers. It has to be, you know, hundreds and hundreds of social enterprises, whether they're doing box systems or buyers clubs or whatever else. So in the early days, and still is today, we're still mutating ourselves and giving anyone who wants to create something in this space, all the tools um, um, with the one explicit. So when they do come to me and we've had quite a few um, who come to me and say, can we do what exactly what you're doing? We love it. And I say, absolutely, here's all the information. But the one thing you must stay true to is collaborating with us. It's, it's absolutely important that the network effect, and so the revolution will only occur with, with a network effect. So highly distributed, highly networked organisations working together. And we saw that in Brisbane last year during COVID. It was just outside here in both driveways. There'd be 10 to 20 farmers in both driveways all and, and restaurateurs who are all out of business, all designing box systems, and it was just just a magic thing to see. So um, yeah, so now, um, I or as soon as I see someone in the space, whilst you know our default mechanism is to go, oh no, they're going to you know cannibalise my market. It, it is a it's it's a it's a capitalist um, scarcity mentality, a Western mentality. You know, if you talk to Indigenous people, it's all about abundance. They don't see scarcity at all. It's all about you know, sharing and, um, and no control. And uh, there's a whole bunch of indigenous epistemologies that we belong to that's taught me a lot of this sort of subtle ways to overcome that default Western mindset of 
yes, I've got a, I've got a, you know, I've got, that's my customer and, you know, <laughs> whatever else, they're not my customer, you know, they're their own person. So that's that whole thing about mate, every time you do something in this space is to, is they have to have the agency. They have to have the choice, the ones that, that decide I'm going to do this. And if you give them as much agency as possible, they will only want to be a part of, of, of collaborating with you in some way, you know, um, in some way or form. Can I, um, yeah, um, respond to that as well? Because I think that's such an interesting point around like how competition is rooted. And I didn't know that um, because I feel like, because my background is from farmer's markets and it's that it is seen as competition if a new market starts near, like in, you know, the neighbouring community or if, um, another producer that's producing a similar product comes into the marketplace it's uh, rather than it seeing as that network it is like direct competition and um, I, I love that idea of building the network um, but and I and I just wonder like yeah is there still that sort of um, without that focus or emphasis on collaboration as a key to increasing the network is it have you seen um, uh, initiatives or organisations that have ended up kind of framing it with that competitive stance because there may be a slower uptake of customers that are regularly um, being involved and, and um, using these more alternative um, food system offerings? I don't know yeah. if that's an articulate question. But... Um, I think I get what you're talking about there, Prue. Um... Uh, did you did you understand the question, Jesse? I no? think so, but I um, reframe it. It was more of like a statement and a question. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, no. Were you saying more of like what do we do about the people who kind of come along and then aren't collaborative? And uh, kind of, and kind of little... I suppose a question of like, are you seeing more people that are wanting to be a part of the network, doing similar things to Food Connect, than there are the customers that are jumping on board to make these. Um, uh, sort of, you know, sustainable activities in the in the longer run. Um, are you happy for me to say my part? Yeah, <laughs> yeah you go, Jesse. Yeah, yeah. I think um, I don't think there's more of these organisations than there are um, customers. I mean, even if you look at my situation, I'm almost an interesting example. Um, I'm not right now, but in the past, I've worked with some of the farmers that supply to Food Connect directly. So I've helped them sell through their own website and through Food Connect, and it hasn't felt like a conflict. Um, there are definitely some out there that aren't as collaborative and are very much out on their own. Um, for example, um, there's one store that opened in West End in Brisbane a couple of months ago that when we saw it coming, I was a little bit nervous um, because they were a much bigger organisation that didn't, didn't necessarily have the same food systems um, background um, in the past, but they were very much using it in their opening collateral. And I was a bit like, oh, greenwashing, they've got big budget, this is going to be scary. But it's just worked in our favour because their big budget went into advertise, like educating on everyone on what Regen Ag is. Um, and the more of these organisations they are, like everyone is, everyone's a little bit different at least, and they're all going to reach very different people and they're expanding that pool of customers at the same time as they're expanding the pool of organisations. Um, in terms of how we manage competition, I might sound, I'm not as <laughs> inspirational as Rob to listen to, but um, the way I do it, and still at the end of the day, we do still need to sell produce and keep this alive so that Rob can make all of this change um, and keep growing and making impact. So when it comes to the marketing plan, we just look at, okay, there's all of this. We've all got so much in common, but what does Food Connect do differently? What does Food Connect have that the others don't? And at the same time, what are the others actually better at potentially than us? And can we steer away from that and just focus on what we do well and explaining that really well and leading with values as well? Because um, I hate to be that person who pulls a statistic from the air without um, being able to tell you where it comes from, but there is this number that goes around and I can... <laughs> give Renata the link to the paper because it exists. But um, people are, what is it? They're five times more likely to buy from you and trust you based on shared values and they are on fact. Mm. So you can tell them exactly what you're doing and everyone else around you can tell them what they're doing differently and they're doing this and that, but it's values and alignment and the 
you know, feel yeah. good factor at the end of the day. Yeah, totally. And the only thing, um, Prue, uh, um, and for all, all the people out there to listen to Carol Sanford, I don't know if you've come across Carol, Carol Sanford, the regenerative business. She's a, an 80 plus year old Canadian, um, you know, just, just, just she, she's phenomenal. And she always go bangs on about your essence and the business, the essence of the business. Um, and seeing that as, uh, as once you identify that essence um, and you don't have to identify it, you know, really strictly, you, you, just, you just know it exists. It's like a magical thing that makes you tick that a lot of people will align themselves around that. And we need lots of businesses who have, because uh, because no one is no one is the same. So we're all businesses, all people have got unique essences. And when you put that out there authentically and imperfectly, um, that is a great attractor for building this network effect. Because deep down, when you're authentic, you only want to collaborate. You want to work with others to grow the pie. But I suggest, um, uh, Carol's got a great um, podcast that she does called Second Opinion. It's phenomenal. And it talks about values-based businesses. And um, uh, she, she is just phenomenal. She's a force of nature and she's got, you know, she's, uh, she's got 40 years of just incredible wisdom. Um, and you won't, I, I guarantee you'll have to listen to her podcast three times every time just to catch up with what she said. It's just phenomenal. That's great. Rob, I wonder, um, given how long Food Connect has been operating, is there something that, you know, current you, if you had the opportunity to tell you back in 2004, um, <laughs> you know, is there, <laughs> is there something that you would share with yourself in those first years of setting up? <laughs> That's, I've never been asked that question. Wow. Um, but it, it's... I mean, obviously the answer is no, you know, no, you know, like you can't, you know, what, you know, and I was a big, you know, I banged on about CSAs ad nauseum. Um, uh, so, so um, probably beca because everything you do back then out, out of a lot of naivety um, probably created a lot of things that are legacy issues, but also have benefited the business at the same time. Um, I mean, I wish um, I wish I probably knew a bit more about um, about accounting. Probably, <laughs> <laughs> I would have been able to figure things out a bit earlier on about our costs, and particularly around um, blue money and yellow money. I, uh, um, I, I'm, I, um, I'm an anthroposophist in terms of my economic thinking, and um, and uh, there's there's money. You earn income that you use for specific purposes and then there's money you borrow off your community or off, you never go to the bank, but, um, but there's um, money you use for capital that comes from another space. And I was using earned revenue to put capital under the business and ran out of money really early on. Um, and so I just basically chewed through, you know, my cash flow without thinking of the future on things that last four or five years. Um, that was, that's probably the only thing that I could have done differently at the early times, which would have saved us a lot of heartache. Um, but, uh, you know, it's, it's all a journey. And, um, you know, um, uh, you learn, and, you know, I think it's, you know, um, I remember when um, a couple of our early staff members were, um, you know, young graduates out of university and um, I had no, uh, no idea around social justice issues. I was in it as a former farmer, batting for farmers, um, and the environment. I had those, they were my two core objectives. And uh, I remember uh, Anna Barnes was the name and she, she gave me a hell of a lecture one day about, you know, I was ignoring a whole bunch of social justice issues. So, um, you know, I've become more and more humbler over the times. I wish I was probably a bit more humbler at the time um, in terms of just being more, res uh, more open to, um, uh, just more open to, um, things, uh, you know, I'm a, I'm a pretty, you know, you know, like a lot of white males, I was, uh, you know, it took a lot to shift me from my stubbornness, but um, I'm much, much more open about, um, you know, giving, particularly these days with, with Jesse, you know, the crew here are millennials in terms of their digital natives and they just really, they're just so inspiring to see. So um, it's, uh, you know, I see, as, see myself as probably the, um, 
um, the, uh, the, the lowest um, level professional in the business at the moment because of all these superstars around me. <laughs> it's pretty amazing. <laughs> Probably. Jesse, come off mute. Did you have something you wanted to add there? I was just waiting to pounce in case I had to, but instead he was really nice. So <laughs> I quite often will go into a meeting or something and Rob will say, Jesse's the commercial one. And I'm like, oh, okay. Um, <laughs> sure. I, feel like, I feel like sometimes I have to bring people back down because I'm surrounded by so many like inspiring idealists and I thought it was going to be something like that. But yeah, thanks, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> Adele, have we got any other questions? Um, just a quick one from Anthea asking if you could please repeat the name of the lady. Was it Carol Sanford? Am yes, right yes, that? Carol oh, Sanford. Yeah, that's right. yeah, yeah. <laughs> just yep. put that. Yep. Um, otherwise, we haven't had any questions come through, Renata. Did you oh, have any that you wanted to Great opportunity. Ask? Is there any questions from the group? Um, I feel like there's a few producers here, so perhaps that's, you know, coming from a different angle. Actually, one question mm -hmm. I've got, Rob, is... Um, or Jesse, you know, from a customer perspective, is there something that they particularly look for um, from the producers, you know, in terms of maybe content that's shared on um, social media and newsletters or, you know, are they wanting more kind of, yeah, particular information? Um, I don't know where to start. They can't get enough. Um, Food Connect, <laughs> whether Food Connect customers or direct customers from some of the other producers that I work with, um, they want to see your face. I know so many farmers don't like taking photos of themselves, but it doesn't matter. Just go out in the paddock and take a selfie if you have to. Or get someone else to take it from behind of you working so your face isn't in at all. But they want to see the person and what goes into it. And again, that does so much to build trust and likability and they want to buy from you and they want to support you. Um, we also get a lot of questions about particular methods of growing and what it is you're doing. Um, and a lot of the time I find some people can be a little bit cagey about that. They're a little bit worried that people are going to be down their throat if they're not organic or all of this. But the more you do to explain what you are doing, um, the more they are appreciative of that and might be supportive of you trying to get to the next stage. So um, yeah, show your face, tell people what you're doing, take pictures of the day to day um, and a little bit left to feel, but share your favorite recipes. <laughs> they want to know what it is that you do with your product because you are the expert in it. Um, and it's again, it's like you're letting them in their kitchen as this next connection. And it's easy. You don't have to think about it. You can probably just take it off a blog somewhere and just tweak it to how you use it most, but it's tried and tested. Yeah, yeah. no, totally. If you're a producer and um you're either belong to or something like Food Connect, or you're um, you're out on your own. You you, you um, you've got to share yourself. Um, you're the biggest sales team in our force, and uh, um, there's so many so many things that people in the city who eat your produce want to know about it. Um, uh, ignore the sort of you know one or two percent that do get probably a little bit shirty about certain things, but um, even use that. Even if they get shirty about certain things. Be authentic, be honest, be transparent, and uh, it'll 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 yeah. really help help you. Well, they're less likely to get shirty as well. It's like that anonymous mm -hmm. online thing. People, not that it excuses it in any way, but people will say and assume terrible things about faceless people on the internet. But as soon as they can see it's a real person, not just some faceless <laughs> apple or a steak, they're going to feel like a lot more kindly towards you and want to know more as well. Yeah, you know, see it as a learning, see it as, as an opportunity for you to educate them, and if they you know are unre unreasonable then that but that's we we hardly have any of that um with food connect it's really people just want to um and and we're going through a real realignment with farmers around them posting you know regular photos of what they're planting um posting regular photos before it comes in really communicating um with me as the farmer liaison if if uh, they told me on tuesday that this was going to be available but on thursday or friday when they're harvesting it doesn't look like it's going to be available that is so important because we then can put it on the website <clears throat> and so by monday morning or tuesday morning it's not a sudden surprise that they're not going to get you know such and such in their box it gives yeah. us time to think about how can we replace that how can we communicate what happened um uh you know it's like our um, the, you know the, our dairy farmer separator um broke because it's a really old separator and they really believe in not buying new equipment they wanted to use an old separator 
and they just can't find the path through this old separator anymore. That's a great story. You know, it's a really wonderful story. So you always see the upside of, of, of the downside, I suppose, of, of things that go a bit pear-shaped. So I kind of came at that from a social media angle before as well, but it, the same thing goes for emails or um, mm. if you've got a really small customer group, the occasional text message in terms of what people want to see from you. I took that, sorry, in the first case, we're not really literally in terms of see and photos and mm. content on social. Absolutely. But in terms of what people want to see from you in general, they want that connection. Um, it's like every, I'm not sure where all of you are from, but city people and even townies, because I'm from a small town as well. They, they're really proud of having their guy. Like my friends used to laugh at me because I used to get my eggs from one place and the meat from this place and everything. Um, and now they've all jumped on that. And like, I've heard them telling other friends and I have a bit of a giggle because they're like, oh yeah, I'm like my meat guy. Like they want to have their some, such and such guy or such and such lady um, and have that connection with you. So if you're really small, like just scalable, just send a text message really and it goes both ways as well. That's something, another thing actually that Food Connect does really well is it's not just um, putting the farmer forward because I think there's a lot of emphasis on that about um, getting city people to know and townies to know their farmer. Um, but it goes the other way. Get the farmer to you engage with them, find out what it is about them. Um, you'll feel a lot better. You'll enjoy working with them a lot more and it will help your business too. It's a win-win. So have a two-way relationship. Yeah, fantastic. Um, I might ask Adele to pop our evaluation form in the questions. We've been um, running this webinar series for a little while now and we're kind of at that point where we're deciding what to do next. Do we continue the webinar or do we look at an alternative way of, of getting, you know, sharing knowledge? Um, so we're really keen for everyone to complete that. Um, so if you're able to jump on there and do that now, that would be really, really appreciated. Um, appreciated. The other thing we've popped up there is the Facebook link. We've started a Facebook group um, and it's a really good space um, like the webinar to be able to ask questions of each other. And we really encourage you to jump on there um, and, and join, introduce yourself and, and ask questions, share information. It's a great space, even if it's as simple as, you know, what boxes are you using to, to share your um, produce? Um, and while everyone's having a look at that, um, yeah, I, I think there's no more questions have popped up. Is there, Adele? Um, oh, Chris got what? a question. Yeah. Sorry. And I may have missed it. Um, I just had to run outside to a hectic puppy But um, yeah, earlier in the, mess, uh, in the session. But if there's any producers that are um, not confident in, like, using online platforms or technology and, and using that as a way to communicate with their customers, do you have any tips on, like, best ways to kind of get started? <laughs> I just had, we had a farmer, he's, he, um, uh, when I asked him, can he share me a few photos? He said, I don't know how, how to even do that on my phone. Like he's really shy. He's, he's had bouts of depression in his past and, and, and a whole bunch of other things. Anyway, I said, oh, it's easy. Like, you know, I can do it. And then um, I think uh, once they get over that first hurdle, anyway, about five photos come back within the next hour and I shared them with the team. And then I really acknowledged him for doing that um, and now we get weekly photos of whether it's his kohlrabi um, I think it's it all comes down to acknowledging um, yeah sure you know I'm like that or there are people like that and acknowledging them um, but it would really it, you know um, and just give it a try mm -hmm. um, and you'll never know what'll you know what'll what'll you know um, how you might you know it's it's an you know I suppose it's one of those sort of things that um, I try to encourage farmers to get out of that, that zone they've been in for a long, long time. I suppose being an ex-farmer and being around farmers for all of, you know, all of my life, I have a way of, of, um, of saying, well, you know, uh, do you want to always be like that? And, you know, let's move on a bit. And, hey, you know, if you want to be a part of us, then that's, that's really important for us and um, you can do it. Yeah. Was that question, Prue, more for you, like coming from your context of wanting to get it from your farmer's markets background, right? Um, yes, and also grew up on a dairy farm. So oh. very much okay. with like that picture in mind in yeah. terms of like imagining if my dad was using yeah, social I'm media to say. try and sell something. Like, I it's don't know where he'd start. Uh, yeah, if you want them to share it themselves or whether it's giving you content to do for farmer's markets thing. But I mean, 
absolute baby steps as well. I think a lot of the ones we've gotten from that we sometimes do get photos that we can share on Free Connect stuff. Um, it's been like pulling teeth, but Rob has gotten on the phone and kind of asked them for a few words and they'll give us a verbal update first and we'll type that up. Um, and obviously I'm coming at this from a marketing hat, so it's not like it's the most advanced thing, but even that can go a long way. Like if they stick to text first or um, if it's sharing through other people's channels as well, if they're more comfortable being there with someone else and someone else kind of talks about them for them, um, getting together with someone they trust and kind of taking a snap together in an environment they're more uncomfortable, like comfortable in. Um, but yeah, I think email is with some people I've worked with, getting them emailing and texting is a lot easier. Um, if you actually do want to take that big step into social media, you just got to start with baby steps. There's no magic formula to it. Yeah, yeah um, that's true. I was just going to say, yeah, true. That sorry to Jesse. Did you did I cut you off there? Yeah. Sorry. Um, the yeah, I, I quite often will when in the middle of a conversation with a farmer when the team is standing here saying, "Oh, um, can you ask him this?" I just put them on speakerphone and then say whatever, and then Jesse and Alice, our um, social media, and the whole team hear the whole conversation. Um, and it, it becomes, you know, it makes it a bit fun. The other, the other way I've done it in the past is I've approached their kids and said, can you take okay. a photo of dad? Can you take a photo of dad like once a month or whenever he goes out to do something new, like planting broccoli or, or repairing the tractor, whatever it is, take a photograph of dad doing it and then send it into us. So that's the other way you get yeah. it. Bigger. Partners, kids, slightly yeah. more digitally savvy neighbors. Yeah. You know, that sort of thing. And I feel like farmers don't even realise people want to know this stuff or they're in interested to learn. They're like, oh, but I just milk the cows every day. Like, why would people want to yeah. know about certain things? Um, but, um, yeah, I think as you were saying, Jesse, there's a real appetite for that insight into what it's like to farm. And um, it's a good reminder no to farmers to be like, that's really fascinating that you separate a broke and you're not prepared to, like, buy a new one and you want to get it fixed. Like, Yeah. Cool. Thank you. Welcome. Uh, some fabulous questions. I hope that everyone has got something out of this evening. Um, I really appreciate everyone who's turned up and joined us. Um, thank you to Adele for helping out. Um, and a massive thank you to Jesse and Rob for coming along tonight and sharing. It's so grateful and Rob, I, I would love to see a hub, you know, big or small in all communities all over Australia as well. So it warms my heart to hear that you want to share this information with others so that they can get this going in their communities as well. Yeah, cool. But thank you. No, thank, thank you. Thank you, Renata. Uh, thanks, Adele, and thanks to IFN. Um, and I hope everyone got something out of it. Keep up, keep up the great work, everyone. Yeah, thank you so much. I had a lot of fun. Um, if anyone else has any questions, I am in that Facebook group as well. So feel free to pop them in there. Um, or yeah, hit us up. I think my website's been dropped in the chat. It has. Thank you so much. And we'll share those websites in our um, email that will go out later in the week. Um, so thanks again. If you please can uh, fill in that evaluation form, we'd be so grateful. Um, and have a good evening. Yes. Okay. Bye, everyone. Bye, All right. See you later, everyone. Yeah. Thank you. Bye. All right, Adele, I'm going to head off. Um, a Good drink job. seems to have arrived here. So thank you very much. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, I'll um, talk to you in the morning. Cool. Okay, see ya. See ya. <laughs>